due to the graphic nature of this podcast listener discretion is advised episodes may include discussion of abuse murder sexual assault and other incidents that some people may find offensive we advise extreme caution for children under 13 Last week on murder she cried From July 2008 to October 2015 over a period of 7 years 18 women were found raped killed or torched in the quiet village of Kavatha Kotaketana In October 2015, DNA testing found a match for six of the murders. The police finally caught their killer. A 35-year-old resident of Kotaketana, a family man, father of three children, Neil Lakshman. Neil targeted single older women and would watch them for months preparing to strike the families of his victims still await justice as his court proceedings are still in progress however the police believe not all incidents were related to each other three double murders were thought to be isolated incidents and these murders were believed to be orchestrated by individuals who had their own private vendettas and intended to blame their cold-blooded murders on the same killer responsible for the single murders The first double murder to be carried out was the most heart-wrenching story yet. Kavindya Chaturangani, aged 19, was the daughter of Nayana Nilmini, aged 52. Kavindya's father and brother worked in Colombo, far away from Kotaketana. This mother daughter duo lived alone. Kavindya was loved by all village residents and was described as kind, helpful and innocent. She was bright and said to be good at sports. She studied in Ratnapura and traveled daily. from Kotaketana to Ratnapura by bus. Right next door to the mother daughter duo lived Darshana Hevage and his brother Dharmasiri. Dharmasiri was a member of the provincial council and a coordinating secretary to the minister of parliament in the area. His son worked at the prison. The Hevage family were very close to both Kavindya and her mother Nayana Nilmini. One day when Kavindya was waiting for her bus to school, she was approached by her neighbor Darshana. Darshana asked Kavindya if she could deliver a parcel of lunch to a friend of his in Ratnapura Kavindya obliged and delivered the parcel of food to Darshana's friend Kavindya began to routinely deliver the parcel of food to Darshana's friend on a daily basis One morning on her way to school 
Kavindya felt ill and returned home and upon doing so wasn't able to deliver this parcel of food to Darshana's friend. While taking Kavindya's lunchbox out of her school bag, Nilmini stumbled upon Darshana's wrapped parcel. After questioning her daughter about it and hearing it was Darshana's, Nilmini opened the parcel of food. Nayana Nilmini and Kavindya were both shocked when they unwrapped this parcel of food. They could not believe their eyes. They found packets of heroin inside the parcel, packed carefully in with the rice. Until that moment, Kavindya did not know that she was delivering heroin daily. Nayana Nilmini was in shock to find out that Darshana had used her good-natured daughter in his illegal dealings. Nayana Nilmini went over to her neighbor's house and yelled at Darshana and threatened to go to the police if they continued to associate Kavindya in their dealings. It was early January 2012 when the mother-daughter duo disassociated themselves from the Hevage family. On February 2nd, 2012, another neighbor of Nayana Nilmini's received a call from her husband. He was unable to get through to his wife in the last two days and ask them to ask her to get in touch with them. The neighbor knocked on the door of Naina Nilmini's house, yet there was no response. He went behind their house to try and get their attention. He soon noticed the back door of their home open. It was dark inside, yet there was silence. This alarmed them and the police were soon at the scene. Upon the arrival of the police, one of the officers entered the house. He found bloodstained footprints on the floor. They were leading towards the door from the inside. He found bloodstained footprints on the floor. They were leading towards the door from the inside. Blood stained the ceilings. It wasn't long before they found the body of Naina Nilmini sprawled across the bed in her room. Yet Kavindya was nowhere to be found. At the very same time, four kilometers away at Opata Estate in Kotaketana, Kavindya's body was found lying in a drain. Kavindya and Nilmini were last seen on the night of January 31st, 2012, which was confirmed to be the night of the murders. The police were initially under the impression that the mother and daughter duo were indeed murdered by the infamous Kotaketana killer. In their hunt for the killer, they took more than 400 suspects into custody. 
As Darshana had a prior criminal past, the CID had grave suspicions that he could be the infamous killer terrorizing their village. On March 7th, 2012, the CID arrested Darshana after 48 hours of questioning. Upon interrogation, the truth finally came out. In mid-January 2012, Dharmasiri's son was arrested by the police for possession of heroin while on prison duty. Darshana paid a visit to Nayana and Kavindya's house and yelled at Nayana, accusing them of tipping off the police, hence having his nephew arrested. From that moment on, Darshana marked the mother-daughter duo for murder as a threat to his illegal business. After Kavindya's class on January 31st, 2012, Nayana and her daughter heard the voice of Darshana's wife calling out to them. As soon as Nayana opened the door, Darshana, his wife and one other person entered the house and quickly locked the door. It was then that the cold-blooded double murder unfolded. Darshana attacked Nayana Nilmini with a machete and killed her. Kavindya watched as Darshana continued to attack her mother. The young girl screamed and fought for her life, yet Darshana stabbed Kavindya to death. The killers then staged the crime scene to look like a robbery. Darshana then loaded Kavindya's body onto a three-wheeler and took it far away from the home to stage her death as a rape to match the M.O. of the Kotaketana killer. They dumped her body in a drain in Upata Estate, Kotaketana. Darshana went home with blood-smeared clothes and even accidentally touched a wall when entering his home. He even sat on his couch in his blood-smeared clothes. The next day, Darshana would proceed to paint the wall red and burn the couch that he sat on, destroying evidence of his family being involved. Darshana and his family then spread rumors throughout the village that the Kota Ketana murderer was truly the individual responsible for the double murder. Darshana's son gave their plot away when he gave the police a statement revealing that he saw his father sitting on the couch with blood-smeared clothes. When the police combed through their home, they found vital evidence. They found the mache, the murder weapon. A man who worked with him confirmed that the mache belonged to Darshana. Nayana Nilmini's earring, which was also found, had Darshana's DNA on them. Seven years later, 
the prosecutors found Darshana guilty through circumstantial evidence and was sentenced to death by the Colombo High Court. Sadly, the three-wheeler driver and Darshana's wife were acquitted due to lack of evidence and still roam free despite their horrific actions. There were also two different sets of copycat killers. Two other horrific double murders that were meant to frame Neil Lakshman. The second double murder was sadly another mother-daughter duo. And the most disturbing part of this murder was that it was connected to the arrest of Darshana Hevage. Darshana's brother Dharmasiri, in order to portray that Darshana wasn't responsible for the murders of Naina Nilmini and Kavindya, in a desperate attempt for his brother to make bail, ordered a hit on another mother-daughter duo to throw the police off tracks and make them believe that the killer had indeed changed his MO. He was still out there preying on these women. Namal, a painter in the village of Kahavata, was given the contract by Tushara and Mihila, friends of Dharmasiri, to kill Premavati Hevagamage. 62, and her daughter Pushpa Kumari, 32. And Namal knew exactly whom to use to get the job done. Siripala, a village labourer who worked at Premavati and Pushpa's home, maintaining their garden. Premavati had lost her husband a few years before this and she lived in this house together with her daughter. Their family owned a significant number of paddy fields in the area. Pushpa Kumari was a young single girl. She had been employed at a gold jewellery shop in the Kahavatta area. Siripala was called over to Namal's home to plan the murder when Tushara and Mihila were both present and told of their plan. Namal proceeded to show Siripala R-rated movies and simulated him by elaborating on the many, many things he could do to Pushpa. Namal promised Siripala 10,000 rupees when the job was complete. On the morning of July 19, 2012, Siripala went over to Premavati and Pushpa's home, asked for work and cleared the garden. Midnight was when Mihila and Tushara arrived at Sripala's home, fully drunk, along with Namal, who had half a bottle of kerosene in his hand. Tushara asked Siripala for a bill hook and proceeded to put on a pair of gloves. A bill hook was infamous for being the murder weapon used by the Kota Ketana killer in his previous murders. It was 12.40 when Siripala knocked on the door of Premavati and Pushpa's house. Under the pretense that his wife was sick and he needed the money from the day's work. As Premavati opened the door, Siripala pushed her down. 
she was said to lose consciousness at his grasp and fell to the ground. Pushpa ran towards Premavati, shouting for her mother. When Tushara hit Pushpa's head with the billhook he had in his hand, every time Pushpa tried to get up, Tushara chopped on every finger on her hand until they were dismembered. It was then that both Pushpa and Premavati were brutally raped. Pushpa was said to be severely bleeding from her head. The entire room was bathed in blood. By that time, both Pushpa and Premavati had sadly passed away. Their clothes, pillows and mats were dumped over their bodies. The killers poured kerosene oil on them and set them on fire. When the fire started blazing, the killers fled. They waited until the fire got the attention of the villagers and then came back under the pretense of rescuing both mother and daughter. When the villagers extinguished the fire at the incident and started searching the house, the dead bodies of the two females who had been burnt to death from the fire were found. The floors were covered in blood. Siripala, who was at the scene, helped with extinguishing the fire and even told the police he suspected another resident of the village, Nilantha, to be involved in the double murder in order to lead them astray. However, this raised suspicion on him when the police found his statement to be untrue as Nilantha had an alibi. Siripala was taken in for interrogation where he confessed to how the murders unfolded, including Namal, Tushara and Mihila's involvement. Sadly, though all three men were taken into custody and Siripala was made state witness in the trial, all suspects were freed on lack of evidence as Devika Tenakon, the Colombo High Court's judge, said that the criminal's investigation department had failed to carry out proper investigations in this respect. To this day, participants in the murders of Nayana Nilmini, Kavindya Chaturangani, Premavati and Pushpakumari Hevagamage walk scot-free. The residents of the village of Kotaketana Kahavatta are still traumatized and live in fear to this day. Murder, she cried, hosted by Stephanie Herft, is a paradigm original. It's executive produced by Zeeshan Akram Jabir. Podcast cover art by Randita Philip with production assistance by Rajit Maligaspe. This episode of Murder, She Cried was researched, written and fact-checked by Stephanie Herft. To hear more from me, follow me at Steffi Herft on Instagram and TikTok.